Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and it's this is what I've, I've been listening to um, uh, different types of YouTube channels, um, uh, fitness bloggers. Um, I've also been playing like Battlefield Four. I thought I had played Battlefield Four. I did not. I kind of mentally my memory sep separated some of the levels from Battlefield Three, and I thought that was three and four. So I started playing it, and uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, that cough's staying in. That's the other thing. We're reclaiming the cough. And here, we'll get to what I was talking about. I just recorded a video on this subject. Please look at the screen. One hour and five minutes. That would take me two to three hours to edit. So I was like, what did I do? It's a long article, but I made a, just a couple of points. I was like, I'm going to re-record. I can re-record and just hit my main points and then you can go read the article and just... okay so that's what we're gonna do uh so uh anyway <coughs> the cops are staying in it's I, I i did some more research on it it looks like it's some sort of reflux thing it's timed to if i just ate if i didn't eat i don't get this uh but if i ate then i get this this coughing reflux whatever the funny thing is that I looked it up, they go, it's very easy to treat. You just have to cut out caffeine and chocolate. So I was like, okay, so, so it's not, so it's untreatable. Thank you. Thank you for telling me that, that it was completely untreatable. Yeah, that's not going to happen. I'm just going to leave the coughs in. Um, so anyway, uh, there was this hit piece on this uh, comic book news site. It seems like it's been around for a couple years called Sketched. Now, here's the sad thing. It's got a great layout. It's one of the best looking websites I've seen. It looks very modern. A lot of these, I mean, <laughs> we basically have very little news and comics and almost all of it is, is horrifically biased. Um, or just out just to just, like I said, Bleeding Cool is just the Joker from The Dark Knight. It's just there to watch the world burn. But others um, are uh, just shill all the time. So this is a new, this is like the new Jack shilling. So you know, for years they ignored crowdfunding and they made fun of it, but now they're basically signaling to companies and creators like, hey, crowdfunding is allowed if you do it on Kickstarter. So uh, Bleeding Cool, even though I said I'm not going to do videos about them, but I do need to reference them. Uh, last week, and, because one of the things they do is they set things up where they collude and they say, okay, I'm going to introduce this, you follow up on it, this third person will basically just encapsulate uh, our points. I can feel the cough. Like it's, <coughs> it's right there. Um, so, so they start building a case. You know, for first two years, it was just like, oh, the crowdfunding doesn't exist. Oh, it's just for losers. Now it's like, oh, it's actually successful. But you better do it on Kickstarter. Uh, so that's what this is about. It's on the power and potency of crowdfunding, both today and tomorrow. So they're trying to guide the narrative. The funny thing is, last week, Bleeding Cool did a, a a news piece, a hit piece, uh, trying to steer the uh, narrative. And they all of a sudden they're like, crowdfunding's great. Here's all these successes on all, yep. They basically ignored that Indiegogo existed and none of the wrong people were mentioned. So you wanna talk about fantastic, huge successes in crowdfunding, but you're not gonna talk about Ethan Van Skyver or Doug Tenaple or any of the other, yeah, I, no, 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 no. So, so this one is like in this very long article that took me an hour to do a reaction to. Way down here, we get, we get the delivery device, you know, for the, the pill, the outside, you know, uh, capsule has dissolved and this is what they want to go into the bloodstream. So I will encapsulate this hit piece. Crowdfunding exists. There's Kickstarter, which is amazing. Then there's that other platform. The funniest thing, they actually literally say that, you know, in, in couch terms, that Indiegogo is a better website in functionality and design, it's just better. And then they try to hand wave away like that's like superficial. You're comparing two websites. <laughs> the one that is better in functionality and features and design is the better website. But they start hand waving this stuff most of their, okay, they completely ignore um, uh, the gatekeeper 
and the union and the 40% layoffs at Kickstarter. Then they start doing these apples and oranges. They're like, well, 800,000 people have bought at least one comic from uh, Kickstarter. Kickstarter has been around longer. I mean, even one of the people in this hit piece, they go, why'd you choose Kickstarter? They're like, it was the only thing that existed. Then they start bringing up stuff like uh, 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 Kwanzaa's uh, Black, uh, the, the publishing. So basically this is a, a hit piece and a shell piece a hit piece against Indiegogo and Comicsgate, a shell piece for uh, Kickstarter. Uh, so a couple of things they start doing. One is they actually use another shill. They go to Heidi McDonald and she's throughout this. And so one of the things they're doing is transparency. They're like, well, Kickstarter is transparent. Who knows what's going on with Indiegogo? But Indiegogo, you can just Indiegogo over there and you can sort by funding and you can see how much everyone made. <laughs> you can also do uh, most backers. Now you can also do that on Kickstarter, but then it, it shows you by backers, even though it's most funded, <coughs> even though that's a different thing. Then you go to most backed. Most backed and most funding give you the same, you look at the screen, it's the same thing. You know, uh, it's the, they just say the number of backers um, not the, uh, they arrange it differently, but you don't get to see the money. Now they do these yearly reports where they talk about all of their different subsections, but nobody cares about the, the cell phone holder where we're just looking at comics. And, uh, so one of the things about these biased, uh, fake journalists is they have to pretend to be objective. So they go, oh, well, it's just a transparency thing. No, literally 20 minutes. You can come up with a pretty good comparison of the two. What they're trying to do is, and this guy, what's funny is he tries to do a hit piece, but I don't think he knows who he's hitting. He's hitting Kickstarter. Because what he, what they're trying to do is they're trying to do two things. Scare people away from Indiegogo and scare Indiegogo away from people they've been successful with. So one of the things they do is in order to scare, they basically say Indiegogo is irradiated and commonly known as a Comicsgate platform. So you want Indiegogo to just kick off everyone because you just said, if you're on Indiegogo, you're Comicsgate or Comicsgate adjacent, even though this Piccolo guy, he hates, look at this, just at the top three, you got Ethan and Doug, who <laughs> they both hate each other. Then Gabriel Piccolo hates both of them. And yet you're saying, Everyone on Indiegogo is the same. They're all tarnished by the same brush. When you just look at the top three most, none of them like each other. They're completely different people. They're there for different reasons. In Demand is one of the huge ones. Your um, active campaign, like Ironsight's Two Psychos graphic novel, second printing, transitions into an In Demand store if you click you know, one button. And if you look right now, this is an active campaign. This is an In Demand store. They're basically effectively the same thing except for just one little line here is different and it'll say in demand. It's a great function. Um, but this piece is all about scaring you away from Indiegogo. Meanwhile, <laughs> the uh, if you go to Kickstarter, you have to go through a gatekeeper. And then the funny thing is that this uh, this the new gatekeeper, they fired the old gatekeeper, uh, starts promoting books and it's like Kwanzaa Osa Jeffo's Black. But then when you go there, <laughs> You go to black and then you go to the comments. The comments are all like, hey, I didn't get my book. So here's the first comment. It looks like you're doing a new book and that's all well and great. But as it stands, I've still never received what I paid for like three years ago. I never got my comics. Weird, I turned off notifications from this project some time ago, but they keep rolling in anyway. Must be a Kickstarter software glitch. So they're promoting, they're like, look how woke we are. Look how diverse they are. Then the first one they mention, the person did it like years late and some people apparently are still waiting for it. Um, <coughs> but I thought that was funny. And then all their stuff is just Elements Fire, a comic anthology by creators of color. So the other elephant in the room they don't talk to you about is if you go on Kickstarter, even if you have one of the best selling or you're, you know, you're creeping on a come up, you could be that high selling campaign, they are going to promote some garbagey woke anthology that's basically, it's like that old, you know, uh, 
a sketch from Portlandia. It's just co-workers, roommates, and family. You know, everyone, in the, you get five people, just whatever. Nobody reads this shit. Nobody's reading all of Elements Fire, a comic anthology by creators of color. You get guilted into buying it. The other thing they want to say is that Indiegogo is a comic gate super pack, but then, <laughs> but then they give all the exceptions where it isn't, um, and then they do this thing where, and that's why I, you can see all the work I did. I got all this stuff up. So you got like a uh, graveyard shift. What is this one, two, and three? And so they're like, well, look at the backers. Uh, so they start doing this weird like apples and oranges of comparisons, but then they're like. So this is really just a super pack. It's just a way for people to give to things that they're not really interested in just to support Comicsgate. But if you look at this, if you're smart like John Malin, and you don't kill all your characters in your second book, you're going to go up every time. By the way, the Jawbreakers are coming back. I've been convinced of that. They're coming back. They're going to be a little different, but they're coming back. Devil Dog's coming back. Hell Priest is coming back. There will be another knife hand. And you're going to be shocked at who it is. Oh boy, did I learn that lesson. But you see, you see Graveyard Shift, $106,000 uh, with 2,045 backers. You see Graveyard Shift 2, 174000 with 2,300 backers. Then you see Graveyard Shift number 3, uh, which started like, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago? Let's just say, yeah, about two weeks ago. It's at 1,400, it's at 136,000, but it is tracking towards 260,000. Now, this far into a campaign, the, the predictions on the metrics are very solid. When you, when you go from like the first couple days, it, it's not solid, but this is stuff is. And you know, he can still pull more, you know, surprise, extra perks or whatever. So I think it's, it's very easy that it's gonna do 260,000. Um, and so this is incredible growth. If you don't kill your beloved characters, oh boy. Hey, Ethan, kill off Cyberfrog and Salamandroid. That'll, oh boy. I, I'm sorry, I got a little Ryan Johnson, you know, galaxy brain with it. They're coming back, trust me. And I guarantee you, the fourth Jawbreakers book after Grand Bazaar will sell more. Because Grand Bazaar is like, yeah, you killed all, you killed all my favorite characters, dumbass. Well, it's like they're an origin. Yeah, but I know they're gonna die. Well, I mean, the heat death of the universe will kill us all eventually, so whatever. Um, but, uh, so they basically do a bunch of apples and oranges comparisons, but they're doing one thing. They're saying crowdfunding is okay now, but you better crowdfund on Kickstarter. They're also trying to scare Indiegogo. I'll, I'll just show that one because this one is just like, it's very like uh, emotional blackmail nutrient dense. Um, so they say, the question from there becomes, does Indiegogo know about this? Due to their lack of response, it's impossible to say for certain. However, they're a tech company, which tend to be all about data and emphasizing what succeeds. It's hard to imagine they are unaware. So what you see here is very, I'm going to scroll or zoom in on this. When they say, does Indiegogo know about this? They're giving them an easy out. They're saying, look, we're coming after you next. So this is your chance to say, we didn't know about Comicsgate. We didn't know about Comicsgate adjacent. We didn't know about Twitter cooties. Oh my gosh. But here's the problem. You've also said that basically anyone on Indiegogo is irradiated as CG, CG adjacent, except for some very small exceptions, but oh, 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 it's still bad. So what's Indiegogo supposed to do? Cut every single book they have to hope they get people from Kickstarter, but you're still, like, they could kick every single person off of Indiegogo. They'd still be getting hit pieces. Well, you know, Indiegogo kicked all the CG projects off but they did work for them for two years. So da, da, da. yeah, you're still gonna be trying to destroy them. Uh, the problem is what you're saying about Comicsgate, com it's stupid. You go, you go there, you get, Ethan is very proud of Comicsgate and he loves it, he talks about it all the time. I think Doug to Naple was into it for a while, but I think it's been like a year and a half and he said very specifically, he is not Comicsgate. And Gabriel Piccolo hates them. 
So how is this a Comicsgate platform? Um, not even getting into all the facts of the hit piece stuff is not true. Here's the deal. Mainstream comic book industry shills. Yes, I'm talking to you. You, among others, have helped destroy the direct market by hunting for phantom Nazis that don't exist. Now people have escaped and they've gone to crowdfunding and you infected and infested Kickstarter to which they had to fire 40% of their staff. Indiegogo is successful because they take basically anyone. You can be current CG, former CG, you can hate CG, you can be Jim Lee, who as far as I know has never mentioned even being aware that it exists. Indiegogo is an actual progressive inclusive platform. It is not gatekeeping far left extremists. So they are naturally going to be, and then it's just the better website. It works better. It looks better. Um, so. Boy, what, what am I at? Like 15 minutes? Jeez. I would have been one eighth of the way into editing that other one. So just to reiterate, um, uh, the uh, shill comic book media, you know, journalists, are, um, they're on a, they've got some new shit they're on. And that is that comics is okay. You know, crowdfunding is okay, but you have to do Kickstarter. And uh, why? <laughs> Why would you want to go through it when some woke bullshit anthology is going to get all the staff picks? You're going to be ignored. You don't get to do an in-demand store. You got some website that... I used to back projects back in 2012 on Kickstarter. This looks effectively almost exactly the same. So, so who are you going to believe? This shill media hit piece or your own lying eyes? Um, uh, Indiegogo's a great platform. There are some advantages to Kickstarter, but this whole cooties bullshit does not exist in the real world. I'm telling you, my favorite parts about being in the comic book industry, being in the comic book business, is talking to people who aren't in it. I love ordering tape and ordering boxes and talking to the different shippers about their different programs and this and that, because everyone else treats their business like a business. But these shill hit pieces, these eternal middle schoolers, want this to be a middle school lunchroom. It's fine to work on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. Here's the deal. I can say that and I'm fine. None of my friends will destroy me for saying, go to Kickstarter if you want. You're, you would be destroyed by your friends for doing the opposite. So who's really in the inclusive group and who is really uh, on the wrong side of history? So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to, get, uh, thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. Cough, 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 I'm not editing shit. Just gonna upload this, be done. Expendables go to hell graphic novel. Iron Sights, Two Psychos, graphic novel, second printing. And then we got Graveyard Shift, uh, volume three. That's doing fantastically. There's great, fun stuff. Enjoy the book. You know, have your, uh, oh, I forget, yeah, I forgot to make this. So one of the things they were saying, they're like, well, look, Graveyard Shift, well, they didn't use this as a specific example, but they're like, that one's $51 per pledge, and then the next one is 73, and then the third one is 95. Hmm, really makes you think. Or, in the first one, he only had one book to sell. In the second one, he had two books to sell. The bundles are, people love the bundles. Look, I got the bundles for Iron Sights 2 Psychos. I've sold 18 of the book by itself. I've sold 184 of the bundle. You know, you, you go on the live streams, you talk about the characters, you know that, that Iron Sights 1 and 2, although they are both complete stories in and of themselves, you know, one leads into the other. And so people go, yeah, I'll, I'll get two books, I'll get two pinups. You know, you know, your boy Zach's delivered on... How many have I delivered on? I think I delivered on seven or eight so far. Yes, I've got 12, but two of them are, will be out very soon. Um, but uh, they've seen us deliver. 
So uh, this is their latest attack. Uh, they're trying to scare people away from Indiegogo and scare in Indiegogo away from successful projects. Um, and uh, the problem is that Indiegogo is an actual business. It's not a lunch table in a middle school lunchroom. Uh, so you all have, you know, gone insane. You're seeing Nazis in your soup. You talk about Ethan Van Skyver like he's literally a demon from hell. But Indiegogo has just dealt with him as a person. Just a regular person, which is what he is. You fucking psychos. You fucking spent years of your life obsessing about some fat guy from New Jersey. Um, but they they are they have a real business. They're just trying to stay in business and grow, so they've just dealt with a person. So your stupid cooties bullshit will have you want them to throw the baby out with the bathwater, then throw just throw out the frickin' tub. Then frickin' move from the house. Like it's stupid. You broad brushed everyone who works at Indiegogo, and then you're basically saying, Indiegogo, you wanna be on the right side of history? You should dump, like, everyone ever. And then just sit there and wait for three years. I mean, we're still going to write more hit pieces, but, like, three years from now, we'll probably be, like, kind of chill, but not so chill, but, like, kind of chill. And then you can start having people. You can only have people who have already been on Kickstarter and are also on Kickstarter. What the hell? So, uh, so anyway, okay. Wrapping this one up. Cough, cough, cough.